All right, we had USC minus six and a half. They kind of choked that game. I think we all had that pick, which is concerning. Um, they didn't cover. They almost lost Oregon State, but they pulled it out. Uh, I had Cincinnati giving 16 and a half against Indiana. They easily covered that, one by 20 plus. Indiana stinks. Uh, Baylor plus three. We all had that as well. I think they won outright. Um, UNC minus one. We all had – no, Brett didn't have that one. Um, lost Notre Dame pretty handily. Didn't think Notre Dame was going to be able to put up points, even though UNC's defense stinks. Uh, and then UCLA, Colorado over 57. I think it was 45-17, so 62. Um, that covered. Steelers plus four. That game was a mess. That was a Thursday night game. That was kind of brutal. Um I had a long parlay as well, and the all uh, eight of my props hit and just needed Steelers. I had Steelers money line. They kind of got messed up. Mitch Trubisky stinks. If they play him again versus the Jets, they're stupid. This is the perfect matchup for Kenny Pickett to come in. Um, Falcons plus two, one outright. Texans plus three, push. Uh, I had him as two and a half on here, so that was one of my losses when it was a push on game day when I bet it at three, but I'm counting it for a loss as the picks. Eagles giving six and a half. They destroyed Washington. And then Cowboys getting one, one outright as well. Um, let's see if there's any notables for those guys. Um, Chiefs, Joe bet the biggest rat line of the weekend, lost on it. Bengals covered against the Jets pretty handily. Ravens, I like that one, was scared of the stats of Belichick winning at home um, and covering at home. So I stayed away. That hit, though, for him. Brett, he was the only one that took Browns. Good on him for that. Bills uh, lost outright, laying six. He had the Eagles, and he fell for the Jets trap, and he went with his Giants. So that didn't uh, work out too well for him. Uh, let's see if there was anything else notable on the NFL weekend. Raiders continue to lose, loss to the Titans, who stink. Um, they got to kind of turn that around, get that figured out, see who they play this week if they can. Denver, but in Vegas, game they should win. Denver looks bad. So they're going to Kansas City next week, and they're not winning that one. Um, so hopefully they turn that around. Bears, 2-1, and one, sneaky 2-1. and one. Um, Haven't really beaten good teams, per se, but I, I, I didn't think they'd win two games all year. Colts with a big upset over Kansas City. Bengals handed the, the Jets a, a pretty easy loss. Dolphins pulled one out the Bills. A lot of their D-backs were hurt, but uh, still did it. Still won the game. Um, Vikings over Lions. Vikings needed to win that one um, just to stay where they were in the division with the Packers. Ravens beat the Pats in New England. Don't win a lot of games in New England. Eagles handed the pretty handily beat the Commanders. Panthers beat the Saints. I don't know what's going on with Jameis and the Saints. They say he's hurt, but Kamara's doing nothing. Michael Thomas hasn't done much. Jameis kind of stinks. Um, the defense isn't looking as good as it should be. It should be like a top five unit. Um, Jaguars smoked the Chargers. Herbert was coming in her. They didn't have Keenan Allen. Joey Bosa got hurt. He's out. He's on IR. He might be out for a while, maybe the year. Um, Jaguars smacked him. Um, the Jaguars could just be good. I was excited to play the Jags as a Jets fan later in the year. Not anymore. Um, hopefully ETN comes on. Got a lot of fantasy stock in him. It's pretty much been the James Robinson show, Christian Kirk show. Um, Rams beat the Cards. Pretty we're, we're up pretty early. The Cardinals kind of came back. It's kind of their MO. Um, Hollywood had like 20 catches. Falcons beat Seattle straight up. Uh, we're dogs in that one. Nothing much to say. Those teams kind of both stink. Uh, Packers held on to beat the Bucks. I thought it was going to be a classic Brady come from behind win. They scored right at the end of the game. Didn't get the two-point conversion to tie. Packers held on. We got Broncos over Niners and Cowboys over Giants on probably the worst back-to-back -back primetime games I've seen in a while. Uh, that was god-awful. Broncos 49ers game was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, let me just check college football. 
Anything notable to happen? Clemson beat Wake in double OT. I had Wake in that one. Um, Baylor again beat Iowa State. Tennessee beat Florida. Probably more than the score seems. Uh, They were pretty dominant in that one. They only won by five. Texas Tech upsets Texas in OT. Miami got smoked by Middle Tennessee, which was kind of crazy. Um, Arkansas falls to A&M. Uh, I think that was neutral site at the Cowboys Stadium. Alabama rolls on Vandy. Wisconsin gets messed up by Ohio State. Um, Oklahoma goes down to Kansas State. And that is pretty much it. Michigan State also got destroyed by Minnesota. They scored seven points. Peyton Thorne's god-awful. Um, but other than that, pretty straightforward weekend. Let's see what we got. Just pulling up the picks for week three. I have mine and Brett's, Joe's, TBD. Um, so we will get that hopefully up on Instagram by tomorrow. Um, he and Brett are out of town again this weekend. But at the Yankee game, so maybe catch a Judge's 62nd. He hit 61 last night, which was pretty sweet. Let's see what I got. All right. So for college, I'll start there. NC State getting six and a half against Clemson. Um, Same reason I went wake against Clemson. I just don't think Clemson's that good. And I'll take NC State's defense, Devin Leary, like a veteran quarterback, to just keep it close at least. I think they can win that game. I'll probably do a little money line. But – I mean, Devin Leary's a great QB. The defense is what it needs to be. I don't think DJ Uagale is very good, um, so it should be a, a good one. UTEP giving three, UTSA giving four. You know I'm big on UTSA. I bet him all the time. Frank Harris is a great quarterback, great runner. Um, NIU, a little MAC action. Um, they're playing ball, giving three and a half. I don't think Ball State's very good. I think NIU – has just played good teams to start the year. I know their record isn't great, but they should win that. Uh, and then I'm taking Wake again, even off the loss. Getting seven at FSU. Um, FSU is undefeated, but if you've watched the games, like they they haven't been good. Like they've been, they're barely winning these games. Um, and Wake's getting seven, so I'm gonna take Wake in that one. The other game that I didn't have on here, but I really like is UVA. Uh, against Duke, I believe that they're getting seven, between seven and ten, and I think they could just straight up win that game. Uh, I know Duke's off a loss to Kansas, probably want to win, but I don't think they're as good as their record shows. Um, also, small thing, UTSA is tomorrow, so if you are are betting for Saturday, make sure you get that one in before um, it's tomorrow night, one of the two or three games. Tonight, I have Bengals laying three. I did that earlier in the week. It's at three and a half. Still like. I think I'm going to do an, another uh, another unit on that today. Um, it's kind of a fade the public one. Everyone's high off the Dolphins winning last week against the Bills. Again, they didn't have their D-backs. Um, Bengals, Chidobi Wuzie, Eli Apple is better than he's been in his career. Uh, they are Jesse Bates. They have good, uh, good D-backs. Trey Hendrickson's a great pass rusher. Um, I think they'll be able to do some stunts with him, get away from Armstead, go at Austin Jackson, who's a terrible right tackle. Um, and, again, just play contain. I know Waddle was coming in a little banged up. He's going to play. Tua's coming off the concussion protocol. Who knows what it's going to be. I'll take the Bengals and the All-Whites, the All-White Stadium, prime time, um, with everyone all hot and bothered by the Dolphins. I'm staying kind of fading that uh the jets getting three and a half i feel like i have a pretty good finger on the pulse of the jets had them money line had them spread week two and they won stayed away last week told the told brett who had the jets to stay away um this was a game that the Bengals needed revenge uh it was a big uh spot for flacco to drop off I'm going to take him this week with Zach Wilson coming back. Uh, Pittsburgh kind of stinks. They're sticking with Trubisky, who has been terrible, throwing a lot of checkdowns, which is what the Browns did against the Jets, and they had a lot of success against that, excuse me, defensively. Um, 
and then I think Trubisky is going to make more mistakes than um, Jacoby Brissett did. I think that the Steelers' line is a lot worse. I think that Najee Harris is a lot worse than Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. So it's just going to be a kind of similar game. The defense is worse. Uh, no T.J. Watt, obviously. Megan Fitzpatrick's in concussion protocol, but I think he's going to play. But he probably he might not be the same same player. So Jets getting some guys back. George Fant is done for a while. Their left tackle, but they signed a few other guys to hopefully plug and play. But we'll see. They're getting three and a half. Uh, Arizona getting two. I think it's time for the Cardinals to just come out and, like, win a game, like, convincingly. They're playing um, – I think they're away. Yeah, they're at Carolina. And Carolina's not good. Arizona's not good. But I think they can at least probably win that game. Um, I know it's kind of across the country deal. But uh, they're a much better team. I think Rondale maybe will play this week. We'll see. Uh, Packers giving 10.5 at home uh, against New England. It's one of the later games. I think it's down to nine and a half. Um, Mac Jones, they're saying he's going to play. Don't think it really matters. The Pats kind of stink. The Packers' defense is very good. Can stop the Pats' little run and dink and dunk game. Um, and I don't think – I think the Packers can win by 17 at least. Um, and then for the Monday night game, it's Rams, Niners. Rams getting a point and a half. I'll take the Rams. I feel like it's going to be Rams public heavy. Um, well, it's actually Niners public heavy. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Rams either way. Uh, getting a point and a half, I think that the Niners just – it is a bounce back spot for him. Bounce back spot for Jimmy G is a lot better than how he played last week. But it is what it is. I think I'll, I'll stick with L.A. Um, don't love betting against them. Didn't even against the Bills. It was bad on me, but – that's that. Now, I'll quick go over Brett's picks, and then we will have Dan and Steve on live for their NASCAR segment. Let's see. Brett's picks are so college. We have Washington giving two and a half. He's been on Washington the past three weeks, which is strange. Baylor giving two. He also has Wake getting seven. Oklahoma laying six and a half. And Alabama giving 17. For the game tonight, he has Miami uh, with uh, plus three and a half. Uh, Commanders plus three. Vikings giving two and a half. He's also on the Jets this week, who he's been on for three weeks as well, getting three. Uh, I think it's three and a half. And then Rams getting a point and a half as well for Monday night. Um, so he's down six games. Joey's down five and a half. I've got a pretty good lead, uh, so I'm – Pretty confident in the uh, the challenge again so far, but again we'll put these on Instagram so you guys can follow along. Um, you know what our picks are going to be if you want to tag along, you want to fade, go against. But uh, yeah, let me see if Dan is ready. Dan. And then we can get into some NASCAR. I'm going to try my best to keep up. It's NASCAR time. See what I can do. Um, But I'll provide some blind analysis. Let's see. Let me pull. Let me pull up the odds. Yeah, you can't sit over there. I thought I didn't realize there was another chair here. Um, let me pull up the odds. <laughs> All right, we have our frequent contributors, Steve and Dan. The uh, Steve. No. <laughs> Talladega. <laughs> I'm trying to think if this is the first time I've been on this show. Oh. Well, you very You're on every week. Well, like actually on on the show. So yeah, so we have we have Talladega this week. Race race what five, four, five, five of the race of the playoffs. We're almost halfway through. Um, so this is a race, Nico, that you can bet pretty much anybody. Why is that? Because anyone, you're not gonna know who's gonna win the race till like the last turn. The air is the one of the most important things at Talladega. Um, any car. Who did you have, who did we bet last what is, week? What is Yellowwood Five Hundred? That's the name of the that's race. That's the name of the race. Okay, but it's Talladega. That's well, it's, yeah, the track's Talladega. Okay, yeah. Yellowwood. So, so we have. Yeah, this is weird. All the odds are like even with everyone. There's no one that's like no. crazy. Well, there should be two sets of them. If I if I if I have the right, odds I see here. 
six guys tied for favorite. Twelve hundred, right? Well, this is for a top three finish. I was looking at for not for the win. If you bet on Chase Elliott, you're either really smart or really dumb because Chase Elliott has no momentum, but he's the favorite to win. Larson is normally the favorite every week. Absolutely is shit at uh, plate tracks. So let's go over. We're going to start with the long, long, long shots. This is where I think people should bet. Yes. This is where Talladega has Talladega, just like Daytona. They have the strong way of the the driver who doesn't normally have a chance of winning always wins. Mm -hmm. So those include people like Eric Jones, Chris Buescher. Chase Briscoe, Eric Amarola, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Michael McDowell, Ty Gibbs, Justin Haley. They're Eric going Jones between. And, uh, Chris Buescher won uh, two times in the last five weeks. They're going from plus 3,000 to plus 5,000. Talk about some odds right there. Eric, That's some pretty. Bet $5 eyes, on one of those. My eyes and, perked up at Ricky Stenhouse. He can win this one? Yeah. He's, he has just as much of a chance as anyone else. Bet $5. I mean, you could bet $5 on all of those. This is this right here is a race you bet because in in my opinion is this is a race where you bet a few different drivers you bet you you know what take five dollars put it on four different drivers spend twenty bucks bet on four different drivers you can even throw in a top three bet in there you know so and so in the top three the odds are just so high in this race is there anyone that you guys are would say that they are pretty consistent with like top tens. Um, Hendrick drivers are the they're the fastest at these plate tracks, but they're the most unlucky because they're always up front. They're always in the big wrecks. Uh, one wreck will take out all four, which is really. Sad. I like the Fords. Fords. Are I think best. I think the Fords. Have, if you if you if you're looking to bet a driver, you don't know who to bet. Go look up who who is a Ford driver. Uh, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Michael McDowell, uh, Chris Buescher, Michael McDowell. I like Fords in this one. I'm sorry, I, I, I like the Fords in this one. I, I'm a Chevy guy, but you know what? I think the Fords have a pretty good shot at winning. Kevin Harvick. I think the Fords are on top. So let's go over mid tier. So these are people that are normally a contention, have a greater shot at the other guys, but still have some pretty good odds. And all these guys go from plus two thousand to plus twenty five hundred. Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Alex Bowman has been scratched. He's out yep. for this week. Uh, uh, concussion protocols. Daniel Suarez and Austin Dillon. Those are all guys going from plus 2,000 to plus 2,500. A little bit, again, a little bit less than the other one, but even plus 2,000 is a pretty good number to bet. I mean, you could throw, since the 48 of Alex Bowman's not racing, Noah Gregson is going to be in the 48, and Justin Allgaier has been confirmed to the 62. Throw Noah Gregson up there. He's a hell of a plate racer in the lower series, and as is Allgaier. Now the favorites. Allgaier. These are the guys that are the favorites every week that I don't think is going to win the race. Even though they're the favorites, they're the favorites because they're doing well on the track at other tracks. Yeah. They're the favorites because they have a streak of top fives. They're the favorites because they're normally the guys that are up there racing every at the top all week long. These guys never win Talladega. Kyle Larson has never won Talladega, I don't believe. No, he's never won a plate race. Right, he's never won. So th th even though they're the favorite, they've never won. William Byron, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Danny Hamlin, Ch Chase Elliott, all plus 1,200. Still good odds. I don't think they have a chance of winning. I would not bet them myself. But I can... Agree for the most part. A lot of them, a lot of it has to come down to luck. Because bless you, because a lot of luck is needed at these play races. Um, you could be anywhere in the track and get wrecked, no matter what. You could be having the perfect race, perfect pit stops, just right there, done. Pick so pick a driver, Steve. Who's your pick for this week? I'm picking William Byron. Not because you're not going anywhere off. You're going right down. To, you're he, not taking any chances here. You're he picking your guy. He has a bounty on his head after last week, so he's a man on a mission. If he wins this weekend, he doesn't even have to worry about the penalty that he got last week. What's a plate race? It's they draft. The oh. plate stops them from going. So Talladega is like just a long straightaway. Yeah. It's just like they're just, they're, there's no break. You're just on the gas pedal the whole time. So what a plate there's is. Turns, when, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's not like it's drag race. No, it goes. It's, but it's a huge. It's like, it's like around the track is like three, like three miles around. 
Okay. It's it's crazy distance. It's long enough and banked high enough to where like you can go at least with the older style cars, two hundred in the turns, three four wide. So a plate stops the cars at two hundred miles per Which hour. They roughly. don't even run them anymore. What the plate? No, they don't run. They them. just restrict them. Yeah, they can't. They can't go. A certain, now the cars to stop at a certain speed. They just don't allow them to go any faster. But they can go faster when they're drafting because mm-hmm. they're they're allowed to bump each other and push. That's why it's drafting. So when you watch the race, you'll see everybody three cars wide like this in like the smallest gap. So they're they're just rotating spots. It's a really boring race to watch. You really the only time you got to watch is like the last ten minutes. It's, That's the only. I cannot watch the draft rate. It's just what, even five laps before it ends, the top five is going to be different than how it ends in five late five five laps mm-hmm. later. It's just completely irrelevant. So that's why you. That's why the track. This race has such crazy odds, and I think are one of the favorites to bet because you can win a shit ton of money on one of these races. You drop five dollars on some unknowners who are never are never really up there. And what's five dollars and get you on four thousand? Four thousand to one. Yeah, two hundred. There you go. Bet five. That th- this is the race to bet. Mm-hmm. And if there's any races to bet, this is the one. Drop five dollars on four or five different drivers. Spend twenty five bucks. Drop five dollars on five different drivers. Throw maybe one favorite, bunch of mid tier. But I'm going to go outside the box here. I like William Byron. He's my favorite guy. I'm always a believer, and I bet you guys I don't want to win because that's what ends up happening. I'm going Brad Keselowski. He can definitely win. I'm going Brad K. He has momentum. That team has momentum. He's mm-hmm. a four driver. He's won on the drafting tracks before. I'm going, and I like to go Chris Buescher. I like to go the two of them, but I'm going to go Brad K. He has plus 4,000 right now, I believe. Yeah, he was in contention to win the 500. Plus 2,000, I'm sorry. He was in contention for Talladega earlier in the year. He was in contention for what should have been the night race at Daytona. Atlanta, I'm not going to count because Atlanta is a whole other shit show. But he's always up front. I could definitely see it. Uh, Nico, who you, who'd you bet? Off, right off the... Well, before, I don't know many NASCAR drivers, so before I wasn't going to look at this and I was just going to guess and I was going to say Ryan Blaney, but now I don't want to pick him. That's a good bet, I would that say. That really is, yeah. He's really good at the plate tracks. And he hasn't won yet this year. Okay, no. so I'll take him. And then for based off what you guys were talking about earlier... Is Michael McDowell sticking out? So I'm going to take them both. He's good. He is a Daytona 500. He's good, winner. but I think he's had his one drafting random he's, race win. He's I don't think he front. can pull off another one. He's always up front at the plate. He already won at, this year. No, 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 no. He won this type of race like a year or two ago. Yep. Okay. This, this, this type of race is known from the fir- giving first time winners and random drivers. And Michael McDowell, who's never ever won a race at any before, won this so, race. Like, all right. So I'm going Blaney. Then is my high tier. Middle tier, Kevin Harvick. Like lower it. tier, McDowell. I like it. All Fords. I think Fords are winning, Steve. I'm sorry. Is it all Ford? Those are all Fords. Yeah. I put McDowell in your mid tier and someone like... Even uh, lower? Cody Ware. Uh, who's in... Is it... Cody Ware is the lowest. I, I disagree, Steve. I think I think Nico has Who them well separated. The... BJ McLeod. Uh, not him. You Danny think Cassidy? McDowell is a mid tier driver? I put Harrison Burton in your low tier. Harrison McDowell Burton. is never even in the top five ever. Well, look at these definitely... guys. These guys, once you pass Harrison Burton, this these bottom five are like crazy twenty thousand. So two hundred to one. JJ Yaley is really good at You bet five dollars on any of these guys and they win, you get a grand. Exactly. This is the race to bet. So yeah. tell so all your friends, five, Nico, you spread like? the This Yaley? is the race to bet. I, where? I like Yaley and I like Castle. I don't. Okay. Really, Nico? Or, or, or Steve? Come on. Yeah, but if those, those are like... Five. Nico was great with McDowell. He's great with Kevin Harvick, and I like Ryan Blaine. I think Nico's right on par with the bets. Harvick ain't gonna do shit. He ain't. But, you know, I think it's a good bet to make. Okay, so I'm not gonna bet Kevin Harvick. And I'm gonna bet Yaley. Don't bet Yaley. That bet guy, Castle over Yaley. Yeah, <laughs> Steve's giving you wild. I mean, again. Well, I'm saying, but that's five bucks to win a grand. I get, yeah, I get yeah. that. That that's a long shot. I, I, I've seen weirder Castle. things happen. Let's see I, if I bet him. What if you like see the, what you guys are saying? It's not even worth betting top three. Like, don't bet the top drivers. Yeah. No, I'm saying top three finish. Oh, don't no, don't even bother with that either. Bet the wins. Let's see, top ten. Don't bet the Castle. favorites. And don't bet top threes. Bet to win, bet to win, and bet the long shots. Those are the ones that are going to come in. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's a random one, you know. But if I went back and looked at all the winners of the last draft can, races, there's, there's going to be very few You can favorites. bet head-to-head, so I could bet... You can bet the winning manufacturer, so I could bet a Ford plus 170 to win the race. Chevy's the favorite, plus 105. Which I'm not, I don't know why. Fords have won a lot of them lately. Uh, Dylan drafting. won... Yeah, I guess so. uh, Dylan won Daytona. Elliott won Atlanta 2. Then Toyota is plus 270. I think... Who's okay. Toyota? Um, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin. Ty Gibbs. The Michael Jordan guys. I don't know. They may do well. I don't know. What's that? You got to do one bet. What's I don't care race? what it is. 23 9. 23 11. 23 11. 11. You got to yeah. do one bet, Nico. I'm doing more than one. I, I think Nico, after he does this race, I think Nico is going to become a NASCAR better. He's going to like well, I don't want to watch it. I just want to win more. Exactly. But I think you're going to like taking the. Sh- NASCAR, you may not. NASCAR, you don't get. You may not win as much, but when you do win, it makes up for it. Oh, I do. Well, that's what when we bet on the show, I'm the only one that bets golf because it's the same type of deal. Like, yeah, even the favorites are twelve hundred to one. Exactly. So you're winning. It's twelve to one. So you're winning twelve times whatever you bet. Right. I don't know if you saw from the earlier Daytona race this year. It was Austin I don't Dillon, think Nico was watching. It. Tyler Reddick, Noah Gregg's in top three. Some dude almost won a million dollars, or won almost a million dollars. What having all three of them in their top three? Yeah. That would be sweet. That's random. It's so random. You that's my three. Is... Castle. Don't do top three. <laughs> that's like. All right. You got anything else for NASCAR? Uh. They need to fix the cars. Because these cars are shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm riding and dying, Ryan Blaney. I like that bet. That's really good. All right. NASCAR I'm nerds, are, we're, we're walking out now. I got nothing, too, so. We will uh, again. I'll post. I'll post the. I'll make a NASCAR graphic and post that too for tomorrow. Um, I'll let these guys pick three people because I'm going to pick three, and then I'll post our picks as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we will see you guys next week.